two days after Lord of the Rings' clean sweep of the Oscars, 11 Academy Awards, but who's counting? The all-conquering Weta Workshop is back on the job. Orcs, Urukai and walking, talking trees have all been shooed off the premises by Weta's special effects wizard and four-time Oscar winner, Richard Taylor. And he's already knee-deep in giant gorillas, a lion you can ride on, and creating a whole new fantasy world for the Dream Factory. Is that the pinnacle? Is it the end point for Lord of the Rings? Yes, I do think ultimately it is. And the Oscar goes to... When they read your name out, it, you feel sick. Nyla Dixon and Richard Taylor for The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. The worst fear is tripping up the stairs, funnily enough, or falling off the edge of the front of the, of the uh, bloody stage. <laughs> In the amazing cast and crew that supported us through the last seven years, I thank you so much. Tanya, my partner, the young girl who, at the age of 13, I bought two live rats as my first present to her. You're still with me. What a great treat. Onwards and upwards. I love you. So. So here you are, you, you've just won an Oscar, you go up on stage and you thank all these people, and then you talk about giving rats to your wife. Hmm. What was that all about? Well, it isn't about um, the win, if you like, it's about the 16 years of working career, the 20 years of, 22 years of relationship that I've been in that's allowed me to get to that point. It was important that I touched Tanya at a very personal level. And it has literally been since the day that she accepted a present from a spotty, brace-faced 13-year-old boy that happened to knock on her front door that had seen a photograph of her at boarding school and traveled down on the bus um, and accepted two live pet rats that um, the, the bond was forged. Fifteen, we sat on a hay bale in the hay barn and discussed one day owning a workshop and moved on from that point. She looks after the business side of Weta and it was an attempt to try and uh, reach out and touch her in the audience and say, cheers, mate, <laughs> good effort, and thanks for coming along for the ride. Are you over the rings now? Have you had enough? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I have as much as... Um, Peter is, has new worlds in his mind. He's left Middle Earth and he's firmly jumped onto Skull Island and ready <laughs> to go hunting large apes. And <laughs> I want to follow in that lead. So um, seven years on Lord of the Rings, it's a big chunk of our careers. And at no point did it ever come unpleasant to the point that we wouldn't want to do it. But there's other stories to be told now. Hopefully one day The Hobbit may be one of those stories. The world's being created by Weta Workshop go beyond Middle Earth. They made 1,700 weapons for the last samurai, miniature ships for master and commander. Work has begun on the lion, the witch and the wardrobe, being made here by a Kiwi, Andrew Adamson. And of course there's a 40,000 pound gorilla sitting on their back, a remake of one of cinema's great classics, King Kong. We're allowed a quick look around Weta's workshop, but there's only so much we're allowed to see because of the next big project. There must be lots of fun doing this. Oh, look, this is wild. We, we possibly are the luckiest people on the planet. We've got to make a hobby into a career, and uh, we haven't gathered um, technicians around us. We've gathered workmates around us, a bunch of people that just love making things. And uh, you, you ultimately couldn't hope for better than that. So Why all the secrecy at the moment? Confidentiality is essential because, uh, for one, the client has asked it. But more importantly, cinema should be a journey of discovery. It annoys me that so much is revealed in these stories. You should sit in the dark in cinema and go on that journey and everything should be exciting and new. But somewhere within the confines of Weta is a huge gorilla <laughs> looking to break out. <laughs> well, um, well, potentially. So. How are you going to do it? 
how are you to make this gorilla look real? Hmm. Wow. <laughs> that would be telling. <laughs> See, because it is quite amazing to the moviegoer that some of the things that you made look real. I had an eight-year-old boy ask me to ask you if the elephants were real. <laughs> Now, are they real? Well, only in our imagination, of course. Are they ever real to you? Uh, completely real. If we can't visualise them as real, breathing, living creatures uh, running around in our backyards, they'll never look real for the audience. Just because it's done in a computer, to me, doesn't make it any less real. It's still being created by these and by someone's intelligence and uh, a a therefore is equally as magical. Do you have a favourite, then? Mm. Is, out of all these creatures that you've created, who's your favourite? Mm, Lurtz, without question. I'm the Hamlet! Oh, I'm the Hamlet! I, I love the character that Lawrence Mohore played. Um, I, you know, the only way I can describe him, as we grow older, there are no, no boogeymen under the bed that are going to uh, bite your ankles. There's no Martians with phaser guns that are going to zap you in the dark. The only scary thing in the real world is real humans. And into the Urukai, we try to blend a very, very careful um, sort of cross-section of what is the evil in humans, the, 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 the roguish, bullish characters that we come across occasionally in life. And uh, Lawrence, with his incredible acting ability, wove that character into um, the menacing, maniacal character that is Lurtz. And, um, you know, the mighty fighting Urukai, and I think of all the characters, um, he pleases me the most. It's been a 20-year road trip for Richard Taylor and Peter Jackson, which has taken them to the top of Tinseltown. They met on the set of an insurance commercial. Their first movies together were the Kiwi DIY splatter classics, Meet the Feebles and Brain Dead. Do you ever miss the simplicity of those days? Yeah, greatly. Greatly, when I was on the workshop floor, building the stuff myself, um, you know, all the time, I still get a little bit of hands-on, but of course when you're, you've got 158 technicians working alongside you, the need to manage them and art direct them over, overrules the ability or overrides the ability to have that hands-on experience. And there is delight in being in the thick of it, um, making and creating. But we've resolved it in our minds that in turn we now have a role that is different but no less enjoyable. We're seeing this incredible group of talented young individuals, mostly New Zealanders, get to wield their mighty talent and in turn create the wonders that we've seen on the screen. You see, what concerns me is that you all seem so nice, you, you all thank the right people on the nights, said the right things. But there's got to be some dirt there somewhere, Richard. What are you hiding? There's got to be something in there. Um, hmm, dirt. Only under my fingernails. Um, Come on, you and Peter, big fights? Anything no, like that? I've, I've yet to... As far, I might be corrected by someone in the long distant past of my uh, working career, but I believe I'm yet to raise my voice in the workshop after 15 years of business. I certainly don't believe I've ever sworn at anyone. I've only ever u heard Peter use a swear word twice on set. I just... One very last question, I promise you, but I was reading uh, recently that something like, at times through Weta, 80% of the people that have worked for you have been left-handed. Hmm, that's correct. What's well, and a phenomenal then? percentage have been from rural parts of New Zealand, and what's more, a great percentage of them have been south of Christchurch. The creativity that we've found from people that have grown up around the bottom part of the South Island is incredible. I, I liken it to the story of Richard Pierce. So much is lost in the argument. Did Richard Pierce fly before or after the Wright brothers? Who really cares? The Wright brothers flew, flew because they were a well-funded, aeronautically minded, interacting with an aeronautical community couple of guys. This farmer's son woke up in the bottom of the South Island and decided that one day he'd build a plane, and he did. That's the true story of Richard Pearce, and that's the true story of New Zealand.